Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are some ideas for how you can use the Image Playground app. So the new Image Playground app that's part of Apple Intelligence for your Mac, iPhone, and iPad can be used to generate all sorts of different images. Here's some ideas for how you can use that. So first, since the Image Playground app is tied into your photos and can easily create images from the people you've got there, it's ideal for creating avatars for use on social media sites and other places. So here you would just go to where it says person at the bottom, click choose, and then choose the face from your photos library. And then it will generate some images there. But you don't have to stop here. You can personalize this with various things like these suggestions or just type your own. So for instance, if I wanted to use space as one modification, I would get this. But I could keep going. So for instance, I can do sunglasses and then I would get this. And if you don't like the first image generated, you can always flip through and it will generate more. It'll keep going until you find one that you like. And then you can click on the three dots here and you can copy this and usually paste it in somewhere or you could save it as an image and use that as an avatar somewhere. When you click done here after you've saved it, it's going to appear here in your list of projects. So you can see it there. You can always go back to it and modify it or export it again. And by the way, an easy way to export this is actually to drag and drop. And you do that to a finder window or the desktop, you get a regular image that you can use anywhere you want. It's so easy to create these that you can create a whole bunch of different ones for different situations, for holidays or moods or whatever. And if you'd rather not the avatar look like you, you can simply go to the appearance option here. And here you choose a skin color and a basic appearance like this. And then you could further modify it if you want just by adding more and more terms. And then continue to flip through to find what you like. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacBoast at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. Another way to use it is to illustrate something that you're writing. So for instance, I'm writing this in pages here. And if I wanted to add an image, I could use Image Playground to do it. I'll click plus there to add something new. And I'll just type a term here. like that, and then it will generate an image and I could use that, but I could also further modify it like that. And if I get something I like, it's really easy to just copy it right here. And then I could paste it right here into pages and then adjust as any other image. This could be particularly useful if you're creating educational content. For instance, if you've got a math problem like this, you may want to have a nice illustration to go along with it. So I'll click the plus button here and I'll just type something like that. Let me further modify it. Like that and say, I like that one. And perhaps what might be more appropriate is to actually change the style from animation to illustration here and use this. I'll copy this here and I'll paste it into my pages document like that. Now, if you post online to say social media or microblogging sites, or maybe just to a regular blog, sometimes you may want an illustration to accompany the post. And you can certainly generate those with Image Playground as well. So for instance, if you wanna talk about vacations, for instance, you may start with a term like beach and then maybe continue to modify it. So you can do like waves and then you can do umbrella. You can do beach chair, palm tree. And then maybe, yeah, let's take the suggestion of sunset right here. You can keep playing around with all these terms and get something that you like. And then I'll click done here. And then you can export this image out. I'll just drag it out here and use it as the image for your post. How about if you're creating an invitation, either a printed one or something you're going to send by email? You can use Image Playground to generate a graphic for that. So for instance, say you've got a birthday party. So you could do birthday. 
birthday party here, and it will generate an image. But you don't want just a cake there. You want to show more of a party. And this is going to be more of a party for adults. So maybe you can do um, a word like this to emphasize that and see what it comes up with. And then have it something like this might be a good image for a poster that you create for a party. Maybe you want to put up a poster, say that you're offering guitar lessons. You could just have a simple image of a guitar like that, and you could use that. How about a keynote presentation? A boring keynote presentation would be just text on the screen. But let's say you wanted to have an image on each slide. That's pretty typical. So instead of going to a clip art collection online or something, you can use Image Playground to generate something for this. So let's type something here and see what we get. That's kind of a neat image right there. We can go ahead and copy that and then paste that in. But you can also drag and drop. And we'll drag this into the placeholder slot here in Keynote to get an image. Now, another thing you do is just use Image Playground to generate wallpapers for either your Mac or your iPhone or your iPad. So let's go do something like this. Let's do a steampunk factory to start with. Then we can flip through these, get something that looks kind of neat like that. And we can drag this out here. And now we can go into system settings here. Let's go to wallpaper. And I can simply drag it into this spot right here like this. And now we've got a cool desktop wallpaper. I can also create backgrounds for use in FaceTime or Zoom. So let's go and create something nice looking. Let's go back to the idea of a beach and Let's do a sunset like that. And let's say we're going to use this one for FaceTime. Let's go ahead and we drag that out and save that somewhere, probably in your documents folder. If we go to FaceTime here, it uses this as a background. We would go into here and under FaceTime, there's background. I've got it turned on. Let me click here and choose a picture. And I can click plus and I can say choose. And I can actually choose the image from my desktop like that. This makes it easy to generate lots of them. And then you could very easily have them all listed here and switch them out. Now you can actually access Image Playground even when you're not using the Image Playground app. An early adapter of this is Apple's Freeform app. So you could be in this app here and you could actually go to Insert and notice that Image Playground is listed here. So for instance, you can use Image Playground to populate uh, something like a dream board in freeform. It brings up the interface here. You could see it is basically the same thing, but in a smaller format and you could describe what you want. So if you want a sports car, you could generate that. And there we go. You could say done and it will place it right there inside your freeform app. So we can generate a few more. And it's very easy to actually just come up with visuals for a freeform board just by using Image Playground over and over again. Now, in the past, I've talked about creating custom folder icons in the Finder. The big problem there is using a graphics app to create the actual images. But you could use Image Playground for that. So let's start off just by asking for something simple. Folder with a stock chart printed on it. And see what it comes up with. So let's say we wanted to use this as the folder icon. I could simply control click on it and copy and then go to this folder here, command I with the folder selected to bring information, select the icon there and command V to paste. And then I get a folder icon that's actually a square image. Now, it would be nice if it was just the folder. Let's do that. I'm going to launch preview and then in preview I can do file new from clipboard. And I get that there. But I can also use the copy subject function in preview that's part of Mac OS. I can two finger click on my trackpad or right click on a mouse and select copy subject. Now I can go and change the icon again. When I paste it in, it's just going to be the folder. It's going to grab the subject from the middle there. So now you can see it looks a little bit more natural. You can use copy subject for other things as well. So for instance, back into image playground, if I wanted to say, just get this car here, I could go in here, I'll copy, I'll switch to preview, create a new from the clipboard, 
and then control click and copy subject. And now you can see I get just the car. So remember that you can use copy subject to get just the subject out of something generated from Image Playground. So there are some ideas for using Image Playground on your Mac, iPhone, or iPad. They just scratch the surface. You can basically use Image Playground anywhere that you need some custom images. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.